long ago, there was narration. In the early years of the second age. Which is less than helpful considering I have no context for when the first or third ages were. This is like me telling an alien that I was born after the fall of the Roman Empire, but before Star Trek the motion picture. The great Elven Smiths forged rings of power. Okay, but who wove the cheesecloth tapestry that is overlaid on the opening sequence? Why choose a cheesecloth filter? Was 1978 such a desperate time? Nine for mortal men, seven for the dwarf lords. Seven? Really? For the dwarves? Whose idea was that and how much did Disney pay them? But then the Dark Lord learned the craft of ring making and made the master ring. Way to omit the part of ring making that requires an understanding of ancient magic and shit. How many people suddenly wonder if they could take up a ring making class at the community college and become the master of master rings? At least one! <sighs> With the one ring, Middle Earth's his. And he cannot be overcome. I mean, unless someone, oh, I don't know, chops off his finger. He did not notice the heroic shadow who slipped in. Narrator then goes on to say the heroic Prince Isildur didn't destroy the ring, and so the darkness grew again, making the viewer confused as to why he is considered heroic in the first place. Roam the world searching for the one ring. And after thousands of years, they never once thought to check the f***ing pond next to Isildur's place of death. He used the ring for thieving and to find out secrets. But forget understanding how he did that. You just meant to pretend to understand how a ring can help you thieve and find secrets. We're only three minutes in, and I'm confident that before seeing this movie, everyone would do well to read the entire Tolkien trilogy and the Cimmerillion to make any sense of any of this. So, yeah, reading. And though 111 years is... <laughs> That's 111 years, thank you very much. Sow feet. Having the flexibility to independently move your toes like this. It's mine now, and I shall keep it. <laughs> Bringing a sword to a wizard fight. Falling asleep with an open fire when you literally live under a tree. Using a paper book as a candle stand. And to top it off, positioning this candelier underneath a f***ing wooden tree branch. How has the Shire not burned down multiple times by now? You desire it so much already. More important question. Did you leave it with him for 17 years and forget to mention that perhaps he shouldn't play around with a ring that could be tied to the darkest evil force ever to be known in all of Middle-earth? Under the power of Sauron, the Dark Lord of Mordor. More names! This is not a movie for regular people who are trying to ease into Lord of the Rings. I remember the first time I had to read the Bible all the way through and there were all these names to remember, but then I found out later that the story was actually written to be centered on Jesus. I feel like I'm re-experiencing that right now. Frodo is Jesus and everyone else I can forget about. Get on with it. Focus on Jesus. Frodo. Let's f***ing go! So I guess we're skipping the part where Gandalf reads the script and confirms that this is in fact the One Ring. Wasn't that a really important step? Gollum left his cave to follow the ring himself and the Dark Lord caught him in Mordor. Okay, that explains how Sauron knows about the ring. But what the f*** was Gollum doing in Mordor? If he knew Bilbo took the ring, wouldn't his first stop during his 60 years of searching be the Bloody Shire? Or any place he knows hobbits live? What a pity that Bilbo didn't kill that vile creature when he had the chance. Endorsing Hobbit side. No! Do not tempt me. But earlier when Gandalf handled the ring, that was okay. For reasons. I must go south now to consult with the wizard Aruman. Yep, he said Aruman instead of Saruman, and rumor has it they changed it because test audiences found it too confusing to have two villains starting with the letter S. And in a beautiful turn of irony, someone f***ed up and left in a load of Saruman's anyway, thus making it even more confusing than if they'd never bothered with Aruman in the first place. Santa? You are saying that we should join with Mordor? Why does Saruman suddenly expose his evilness? I don't think he truly believed he could turn Gandalf, so doesn't it make more sense to keep him oblivious and continue to try and get the location of the ring out of him? Gandalf and Saruman walk like their pelvises are upside down and their legs are attached with bungee cords. It makes me very uncomfortable, and I am concerned. In an impressive feat of time travel, a cartoon from 1978 based on a book published in 1954 manages to rip off the Dementors from Harry Potter. If the ring wraiths can get this f***ing close to the ring and still not find it, how the f were they ever going to get hold of it? Hey! Allowing yourself to excitedly exclaim when only moments ago a horror was hunting you and is likely still near enough to hear you cheering. Photoscoping is absolutely a choice. It's a choice I respect, but on this occasion, it's also a choice that has provided a thousand times more nightmare fuel than I was prepared to deal with, at least without access to whatever awesome imbibements were available in the 1970s. We have some visitors with us tonight, all the way from the Shire. They f***ing told him where they came from? What good is a fake name if you're also giving out your damn home address? Well, a short one then. Sorry, I got distracted. Are they talking about Aragorn's tunic? 
Who's that? The ring wraiths decide to pounce on Mary, fart in his general direction, and then politely f*** off, and for no discernible reason other than to give Frodo and the gang a heads up, which should not be their plan. Somehow this fall results in the ring dislodging itself from Frodo's pocket and landing on his finger in the space of about a half second. Yes, I know it has a sort of willpower, but if it can pull off this maneuver, why not jump its way onto Frodo's finger any time he puts his hand in his pocket? After your performance tonight, it won't matter what you call yourself. The Black Riders will know who you are by morning. Well, and just hear me out here. As their designated strider, maybe you should have revealed yourself to them before said shenanigans occurred instead of lurking in the shadows and taking hits from your pipe. The Black Riders are watching the road night and day. But who is watching your hemline? Well, I mean, technically all of us are now watching the hemline because I drew attention to it, but you started it by drawing it in the first place. They'll come on you in the wild, in some dark place where there's no help. I thought this was a kid's movie. I can take you to Rivendell by paths that are seldom trodden. Inside check this man, Frodo. Everyone knows you cannot immediately trust the strange man cloaked in darkness. What if he were to rob them of their most precious items that he clearly already knows about? I mean, he won't. He's Aragorn and a total badass, but they don't know that. Well, you do need looking after all of you. Odd for the tavern keeper to shift from these hobbits or asshole troublemakers to here let me help so quickly. That is suspicious. Inside check him, Frodo. Sorry, these fantasy movies are a brutal reminder of some major D&D blunders. <laughs> this cartoon was rated PG back in the 70s. PG? Kids would have had no fucking clue that they aren't watching four cartoon hobbits being brutally stabbed to death, and we hang on this shit for a full 15 seconds. Wait, what is that? A braid on an avocado? Is that a dragonfly that smacked into the front of his helmet? Okay, this is no longer scary, it is sad. Super sad. And Baron was a mortal man. And Baron begat Dior, who begat Euling, who begat Elros and Elrond, who begat Arwen, which is my boo, but she doesn't even appear in this movie and I'm f***ing pissed. Also, Arwen's absence from this movie makes me wonder why she was in Jackson's Lord of the Rings in the first place. But making me question that is super f***ing sinful. I really don't know why we're supposed to be scared of the ring rates. After thousands of years of searching, they finally find the ring, and instead of tearing Frodo to shreds while they have him surrounded, they send in this asshole, who only manages to inflict a slight armpit wound before being scared away by a man with no sleeves and some fire. Seriously, that's it. They all f***ing leave just because Aragorn waves some f***ing torches at them. Not a single one of the demon horsemen decides to take advantage of Frodo's weakened state. I think that a piece broke off in the wound and is working inward. How the f*** does that happen? How is Frodo's flesh strong enough to break an evil demon sword, and why isn't this more surprising to Aragorn? Legolas! Aragorn has time for this extended reunion, while Frodo is literally dying on the back of a horse. Do you understand me, Sam? Sam doesn't reply, which definitely means he doesn't understand. So here's a sin on Legolas for being an ass and not explaining it the simplest way. Which, of course, is to just say, I'm a timeless being, stop being dumb and do what I say. <laughs> what the f*** did Aragorn think was going to happen here? Okay, so far the ring rates haven't been the most challenging of foes, but bringing your feet to a horse fight is never a good idea. I dub thee Legoderp, born of the greatest hybrid of elves, Siamese cats, and Vincent D'Onofrio's character from Men in Black. Wait, where the f*** did everyone go? Frodo hasn't put the ring back on, so this isn't that weird Shadow Realm place. Where the hell did Legolas, Sam, Merry, and Pippin go? And why is it suddenly dark? Why am I not high right now? Word to the wise, if you want to show off your equestrian moves, this artful medium is not going to help it look good or make sense. You've turned the horse into a black shadow, dropped acid, f***ed with perspective, ate the film reel, shit it out again, and then cut it into a movie. Stop it. Come back. Come back to Mordor, we will take you. Man, the movie really doesn't explain things very well. We know more about the beginning of time than any clue as to why the horse chase just stopped at the water line, yell a bit, and then they start to cross the water. Where is the narrator when you need him? The water horse sex machina. I am here. And you are lucky to be here, too, after all the absurd things you've done. Yeah, that's totally my fault that some old asshole sent me out into the wild with a possessed ring so I could be traced down and stabbed by ghost men. I'm such a dick for letting that happen. You would have become like them, one of the ring wraiths. If it's that easy to create a ring wraith, why aren't they doing it to every random person they find on the road and raising a f***ing army of ring wraiths? You have not asked me why I was late getting back to the Shire. Jesus, Gandalf, the kid just woke up from almost dying. Give him a moment to prioritize his thoughts and maybe take a minute to come to terms with the fact that the first thing on Frodo's list is 11 Zs and not a play-by-play -play of the Balrog battle. I rode at once to Isengard. The movie now thinks we need a flashback for something that happened less than 30 minutes ago, which is at least an acknowledgement that said 30 minutes actually felt like three days. This awkward moment when Frodo breaks the fourth wall while Gandalf pets his head. The food's very good. And I listen. And I think. Judging by the pacing so far, I'm honestly scared that the remainder of the movie could be spent on Bilbo's Yelp review of Rivendell. Don't adventures ever 
Thing I've been saying since we left the Shire somehow makes it into the script. Elves and dwarves, in their turn, told what they knew of Sauron's preparations. Yeah, but did they have to do that while brandishing a weapon? This is a discussion, not a time to show off weaponry. Put the axe and the bow away. So Frodo learned at last the true heritage of Aragorn. Well, good for f***ing Frodo. Would you care to clue the audience in as well? And it is just possible that he may not notice the small, quiet feet walking into peril. But in a short time they've been on the road, those small hairy feet have managed to draw all of the attention from ringwraiths to tavern people. Forgive me for expecting something more than just possible for your plan to save all of Middle Earth. That is what they're trying to decide here. Putting your hands on the incredibly well-respected legend that is Bilbo Baggins. Dumbledore's f***ing salty in this version. I sort of love it, but still, don't touch Bilbo. Though I do not know the way. I think that this task is appointed for you, Frodo. I know Galadriel's voice is described as deeper, but damn, she suddenly looks and sounds exactly like Elrond here. I thought perhaps you might uh, care to have these, Bilbo. Well, I don't think I should look right. Turning down mythical Under Armour because it doesn't look right. It chimes where there are enemies about, ox and things. And things? How about taking the time to explain the fine print of magically imbued items before passing them on to their new owner? And Gimli, son of Gloin, for the dwarves. But forget actually seeing anyone mentioned, as the animators have opted to now bury the characters in a blinding snowstorm. Peregrine Took and Meriadoc Brandybuck may also go. And trusting the ring to Frodo is a pretty sketchy idea, but fine, it's fate or whatever. What I will never understand is why the fairly useless Merry and Pippin are allowed to go. Yes, they bring the Ents into the conflict, but there's no way that was part of this batch plan. Who Gandalf will have that gate open in a minute? What if he can't? Fireworks are all very nice. But this is elf magic. If only you had just come from a great city of elves that could have given you some sort of heads up. Or better yet, what if you had a f***ing elf present in your party? What are people you dwarves are for hiding things? Wait, if this is a dwarven mine, why is it protected by elven magic? Yes, I'm sure the answers we seek are in the book, but we're sending the movie, and believe me, you do not want us to start sending books. Mechlon! That sounded nothing like melon, and you know it. Ah, Frodo's surrounded by two human warriors, an elf, a dwarf, and a f***ing wizard, and not one of them was on Stay Close To and Protect the Last Hope for Middle-Earth from Tentacles duty. No, clearly no need to tell anyone about that. We'll just hi-ho, hi-ho to more, here we go, and hope I was dreaming. I, I, uh, dropped a stone. Fool of a took! Throw yourself in next time! Be quiet! Hey, Grumbledore, it was your idea to pick this specific spot to rest in, and all you've done is berate people for breathing too loudly. If it's so dangerous, why choose this spot to rest? Throwing four-foot-long battle blades at your allies. <laughs> I realize this is an alarming thing to hear when Moria has been silent so far, but Gandalf just read about drums in the deep, not brass in the deep. I think they're going to be fine after all. They're coming. Slam the door to quench them. As everyone scrambles to do battle with an approaching army of orcs, I can't help but think some sort of magical sword that could maybe glow or something when orcs are nearby would take the sting out of the sudden attack. I hear that a great way to avoid getting orcs arrows tangled in your beard is to remove yourself from the only gap they can fire through. Come no closer, I warn you! This works. You cannot pass! William Squire does a fine job, but this scene does not contain a Syrian McKellen and not nearly enough. <clears throat> you shall not pass! Lothlorien is a place of healing. But is it a place to turn in your XP and upgrade weapons? Because Boromir's sword is looking mighty f There is no evil in it. Unless a man brings evil there with him. Welcome to Lothlorien. I guess we're in Lothlorien then. F me, this movie jumps around so fast, I may need Galadriel to take a look at my whiplash when she's done with the hobbits. Holy sh! I just realized that this movie must have inspired what dreams may come, and that movie can go to hell. The mirror shows many things, Sam, and not all have yet come to pass. Some never come to be. So the prophecy puddle is just slightly less useless than the Zodiac? When someone promised me this movie would bring me Galadriel firing a rainbow out of a ring, this was not what I had in mind. I pass the test. The music is telling me that this scene is whimsical and sober, but the delivery of the lines is about as bland as reading a grocery list. In a few days we will have to choose. Shall we turn west with Boromir and go to the wars of Gondor? Or turn east to Mordor and its Dark Lord. How is this even a question? The mission is to go to Mordor and destroy the ring. F Boromir, f Gondor, you stay with Frodo and torch that ring, damn it. The day of choice which we have long delayed. There is no choice! You're going to Mordor! I am not Gandalf. 
If he had any plan for this moment, he never told me. He did! It was f***ing Mordor! May I stay and talk to you, just for a while? None of the others are wondering, hmm, I wonder where Boromir has disappeared to. He sure seems pretty keen on using the ring. I'm sure he wouldn't be trying to take it from Frodo by force. Aragorn, go to Minas Tirith. Save my people. Character survives just long enough to share dying request cliche. The fate of the ring bearer is in my hands no longer. The company of the ring has played its part. Only because you say so, asshole. By that logic, my parents could have claimed the same after losing me at Walmart. Alas, we valued our time with Jeremy, but as we reached the cashier with no child in sight, we knew our time together had come to pass and our responsibilities as parents finally concluded. If anyone ever asks about the only time I cracked a smile during this entire movie, it's right here, while watching Aragorn, son of Arathorn, master ranger, future king of Gondor, inexplicably trip over his own damn sword. Who on the animation team hated this character so much? that they went to the effort of animating this huge fuck you. They are alive! One of them anyway. But this brooch doesn't mean sh For all Aragorn knows, they could have been killed and eaten before, during, or after the brooch fell off. Okay, not a cheery thought, but it's better than false hope. Thank goodness for that rope the elves gave you. We'd never have gotten down that last cliff without it. Movie decided to show us two straight minutes of nondescript silhouettes running through an oil painting, but skipped showing us the dramatic scene of Frodo and Sam scaling a dangerous cliff face? Come to think of it, the movie also skipped the important to the plot scene of Galadriel giving the elven rope at all. What the f***? We must find a place to camp, I suppose. Maybe there'll be a path tomorrow. What kind of logic is that? What, does he think that the Mordor city planning team is going to come around overnight and fit a new pedestrian overpass right to Mordor? I have to say, it's very sporting of the riders of Rohan to stop killing the orcs long enough for them to set up this defensive line. Doesn't make any fucking sense, but it sure is sporting. Look, I know orcs aren't the most intelligent creatures in Middle Earth, but god damn it. If they're smart enough to create this defensive circle, they're smart enough to not leave this convenient gap and maybe even give a passing poke to this intruding horse as it gallops through. However, this guy is also a dumbass riding straight in on his own and getting immediately shot, so... Sins for all. I don't even know where we are. You should have studied maps more and played less in Rivendell. But if you had studied the maps, how would the audience know where you are and why this place is important? Then where would you be, you fool of a tuck? You may call me Trebia. Explaining who you are after you've already hobbit them. Not a tree, a tree herder. Oh, huh? I threw down my enemy, and his fall broke the mountainside. But since the movie decides to bombard us with a thousand cuts edited by Salvador Dali instead of actually showing us the battle, this tale comes off more like one of those exaggerated stories that Daniel from Accounting always shares. Like that time he claimed to have fought off an eight-foot bear with nothing but an apron, barbecue tongs, and a winning smile at his family reunion in Connecticut last weekend. Sure, Gandalf and Daniel, we believe you. Holy sh**, the second age must be set sometime around 2003 because that Bruce Almighty moon is huge. The great danger is to Edoras. Saruman's orcs were attacked there within two days. And yet you still had time for this Saruman fake-out bullsh** instead of rallying the troops or wondering where the f two-thirds of your previously intact fellowship is gone. Erdon has grown old and leaves everything in the hands of his new minister. Gandalf's position! Theodon's hundreds will face your tens of thousands! Saruman has been conspiring with Mordor, poisoning the mind of King Theoden, and has raised the largest army of orcs the world has ever seen, and Gandalf never suspected something shady was going down with his old buddy. And once again, I'm sure there are tons of things in the book that make this more believable, but this movie decides to spend more time animating the individual toes on these hobbit feet than catering to anyone who hasn't read the books in the last decade. <laughs> I'd love to know who's taking the time to teach the orcs to carry a tune on these horns and why they think that's a good use of their musical skills. I will find Eomer and his riders. My armor! R.I.P. to poor Gandalf's eardrums after this needlessly loud exclamation. Do you like seeing people ride horses a lot? How about seeing that strangely animated in such a way that the people look like polymer clay models being electrocuted? Well, do I have a waste of time for you. We hate bagginses. Must have the precious. A few minutes ago, we saw Sam berating himself for falling asleep instead of watching Gollum, but now it seems they've abandoned the idea of taking watches entirely and have developed selective deafness as Gollum monologues through the night about murdering them. All of the important people survived this. The sky is blue, the sky is red, the wall is green, now it's red. Does it mean anything? No, but please remember to meditate before bedtime to try and forget this nightmare. You might come to this story because of the relationships that Tolkien wrote so passionately about. Or maybe for the themes of overcoming great odds and the ties that bind us together despite race or sex. This series is favorably one of the greatest adventure stories ever written, but this movie gives no shits about any of that and dives headfirst into becoming the longest and worst depiction of battle scenes to ever be on screen. Listen, this is not how I remember the Battle of Helm's Deep going down. What happened? 
of the exploding orc and Aragorn throwing Gimli. Damn it! I wish these adaptations would do a better job of sticking to the source material that inspired it. No elves are harmed in the defending of Helm's Deep. We're there, Sam. Another day, maybe two. Then you are not there! Well, it's a good thing, Mr. Frodo, because we're running awful low on food. You're also running low on time. I can't wait to see how they wrap up all these loose threats. Give the Battle of Minas Tirith the AO and it deserves, and get the Ring to Mordor in the next ten minutes. I don't think the story is playing out quite as Tolkien imagined, but this is gonna be awesome. These fidgety assholes that can't be still like everyone else. Great to see you, Gandalf. Now bring out that magic staff and vaporize some fools. Just gonna swing your sword around in the air? Cool! That works too. Holy sh**, the orcs disperse immediately. But why would they care about a few extra riders? Gandalf is scary, but they still must outnumber them by thousands and thousands. Why are the orcs acting like they know there's not enough time in the movie to continue this battle? The forces of darkness were driven forever from the face of Middle-earth. Well, I suppose there's no need to worry about that super dangerous mission to Mordor then. Better grab one of those big eagles and send word to Frodo and Sam before they, I don't know, get eaten by a giant spider or some sh**. As their gallant battle ended, so too ends the first great tale of... First great tale? Narrator, sir, this is the first and little of the second and probably parts of the third, but somehow not nearly enough of all at the same time. I mean, it's kind of hilarious that The Return of the King had far too many endings, and this movie solves that by not even having one. Also, disrespecting Glamdring like that. It's not graduation day. That's going to come back down and stab someone in the face. Also, also, to anyone who said Infinity War isn't a complete movie, this movie would like you to hold its ale. Fool of a took. Throw yourself in next time and rid us of your stupidity. I don't know half of you half as well as I should like, and I like less than half of you half as well as you deserve. By the power of Greyskull. Artax, you're sinking! Come on! The time has come. For you to lip sync. For your life! We must send the ring to the fire where it was made, to Mount Doom. One does not simply walk into Mordor. What does the ring bearer say? Ding, 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 ding. You shall not pass! By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! Jesus Christ. That's Jason Bourne. The forces of darkness were driven forever from the face of Middle-earth by the valiant friends of Frodo. And that's the end of that chapter.